This program is made possible by Kentucky One Health. I, uh, I was 44 years old and uh, all of a sudden just uh, started having severe pain. I started noticing I was getting fatigued and a lot of my family members uh, were telling me I looked very pale. And uh, I was ignoring all this. I was thinking, well, you know, I'm in my 50s. I work harder now than I did when I was in my 20s. I should be fatigued. I should be tired. You know what? My mother is a neat freak. When I woke up, something was telling me to go over there. When I seen she had dishes in her sink, I knew something was wrong with her. I have one brother, uh, one niece, one nephew that are uh, having colon cancer. Uh, after I had this colon cancer, uh, all of my sisters and brothers, except one brother, had to go get colon off. He won't go. I don't know why. He says he just don't, don't want to know. Everybody kept telling me I needed to go have testing. And I said, why should I go? I'm not sick. I don't have any symptoms. I feel fine. So why should I go? So I didn't go. My grandfather passed away from uh, colon cancer, as well as my father. I would say we see later stages when they come to us. Once they've been diagnosed, it's usually third and fourth stage. And <laughs> I don't know. I ignored my symptoms for probably a good four to six months. I was referred immediately to a gastroenterologist for a colonoscopy. Um, had that on a Monday, got a cancer diagnosis on a Wednesday, and saw a colorectal surgeon on a Friday. You're in charge of your health, no one else. You're going to be the one that decides what to do or what not to do, and you're going to have to face the consequences if you choose not to do anything. When they, when they first told me, I was like, well, you know, I'm used to having to explain to other people why things happen, horrible, horrendous tragedies, why they occurred in their lives, and now I'm having to explain this to my wife why this is happening to us, because it's not just me, it affects the entire family. And she's faced with the possibility of having to raise our two children by herself. It's just not our conversations we have. Yeah, we talk about, you know, at that time when something goes wrong, somebody loses their life to a health issue like cancer. There'll be a brief conversation. But I don't, I can't recall at any time in my life before this challenge to, to go on and, and, and really confront the whole situation about uh, colon cancer screening. Colon Cancer Prevention Project. This is Patty. May I help you? My name is Patty Francis. Um, I work at the Colon Cancer Prevention Project as Education and Health Systems Program Manager. I started um, with the project because I lost my mother to colon cancer four years ago. Our focus is increasing screening among all Kentucky and Southern Indiana residents with a focus in Eastern Kentucky and African American males. I'm behind the eight ball, you know. I should have had this done several, several years ago. Was reluctant to do it or just had the mindset, didn't want to know. The more that I think about it, uh, I do want to know. Hey, I love you brothers, how y'all doing? Good to see y'all, okay? Come here, son. I'm gonna get right back there. Come here, brother. Also, uh, a photo of of, of, of the anti-violence uh, work that we engage in. And then uh, this photo, when we launched a campaign for a 16-month-old toddler that was unfortunately hit by a stray bullet here in West Louisville in uh, August of 2014. Her name is Naraya Miller. We call her baby Naraya Miller. And my partner, uh, Percy Master P. Miller, uh, who lives out in Beverly Hills, California. Um, 
we were just um, letting the public know about our intent to create a national campaign in her honor. This was uh, a plaque from uh, the current mayor of the city of Louisville, Greg Fisher, when uh, created the Voices of the Survivors Committee. This is a plaque from uh, U.S. Congressman John Yarmouth. Um, as it relates to the community work and the compassion that I hope to try to at least uh, advocate. I got some grandchildren. They mean so much to me. And what I'm trying to promote right now is about the thief that became the killer. And what is the thief that became the killer? It's called colon cancer. Black males and women too. If they don't build up the courage to get screened for colon cancer, it can sneak up and kill you and take you away from your friends, your family, and especially the ones you have such a passionate connection to. Hey, big guy. It's interesting. Maybe there's not enough education. Um, we've come really far on education. I think it's getting better and better. Um, I think you hear a lot of patients say it was fear. They just didn't want to know. They had symptoms. Sometimes they'll say that. Um, used to be the insurance, but now most patients have insurance, you know. So I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, you'll hear a lot of people say, well, my grandfather, great-great-granddaddy had it. Um, I was just destined to have it. It's in the family. It's hereditary, you know. So you hear a little bit of everything. After I had my colon cancer, my wife's brother uh, came down with colon cancer, and he passed away with it. When the time they found his, he had fourth stage. He was 56 year old. Uh, he, uh, I don't know, it just, Yes, it's his time, I don't know. I would like for people to know that if, if my brother was here and he would tell you, he would say the doctor recommended the test and I put it off. You know, for what I see in here in Eastern Kentucky, it's not just the insurance. A lot of it's a fatalistic view of it's my turn, it's my turn. If, I'm, if God wants me to have cancer, it's just my turn. Two years ago, this very month, um, I was experiencing a, a number of different symptoms. Um, I was getting weak, uh, fatigued. I'm a very active person. I've always been very energetic, e even at the age of 54. And I started noticing I was getting fatigued. And a lot of my family members uh, were telling me I looked very pale. And it kept getting worse. And then one night as I was checking my lot, to make sure the store was clean on the outside, I got back to the employee door and I was out of breath. And I knew then something just isn't right with me. I told my wife that night, I said, I'm going to the doctor tomorrow because something's wrong and I'm afraid of something bad. After they gave me four units of blood, they started running tests and they found a, a tumor on my colon. Uh, I had to have part of my colon removed, part of my abdominal wall where it invaded there was removed. And I was sure after that I was, I was going to be okay. I was going to you know, recuperate from the surgery, go right back to work, and everything was going to be good. We thought after the colon cancer, everything was over. But then they, it had moved to his liver. And the only word I can think of is I was terrified, scared. I wanted to be in denial. Cancer is the most awful word in the human language. People would mention to me, you know, you may have cancer. No, I'm not going to have cancer. That doesn't happen to me. Other people get cancer. And when the test came back, uh, the oncologist looked at me and said, uh, if it's positive, you, you have cancer. And half the lip nodes we tested are positive for cancer. Uh, unfortunately, the cancer spread it to your liver. You are stage four. And I wasn't really educated on cancer, but I knew I was at the top of the chart. They don't go no higher than stage four. But it's not a death sentence, too. That's something people really 
really need to know. But it does mean an automatic war, not a battle. You win it by battles. In November of last year, they found spots on my lungs where the cancer had moved to my lung. And uh, I've had six, five, five sessions of chemotherapy since then. I got one more to go this week. It makes you extremely weak. Uh, the feelings that you have in, uh, are something that you never have from any flu or cold you've ever dealt with. Uh, my feet, at times, I put them on the floor. I can't even feel them. Uh, your nails become brittle. You have to be careful about trying to open a pop can or anything like that. It can snap your nail completely off your, your hand. Uh, all your senses are affected. I have water here at times. Uh, nose bleeds in the morning. Your taste buds go dead. All these things, that, discomforts from all your senses happen to you. Uh, sometimes blurred vision. I was working one night and I looked up there at the uh, front line at my customer and I saw three of them standing there. And uh, I remember an old Rocky movie where he was getting pounded really good and his man, he said, I see three of them out there. And his manager said, hit the one in the middle. So I thought, give the change back to the one in the middle. <laughs> and there's sometimes I know, I'm trying not to cry. Even though he has all of us around him, there's times he has to feel so alone going through it. But I think just the support of the people, and he's such an amazing man. Some people you have to push to do what they need to do. I have one you have to pull back. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And with the right attitude, I'm gonna beat this thing, attitude. With the proper care, listening to what our doctors tell us, we can win. A lot of times, our, the family members, I'll address that to. I don't want to beat them down already. It's like, oop, came in a little late. You know, you don't want to go there with that. <laughs> but um, some of them will admit that. They will say, I was having symptoms. I'll say, well, did you not feel well? Any weight loss? You know, um, yeah, I I'd been passing blood, but. I just hoped it'd go away, you know. What was when the circumstance? I was younger, you know, when you heard of cancer, you knew it was something that would affect or kill one of your members, friends, or family. But it wasn't as serious until I got older. And you notice how quickly the results are with cancer. You know, once you realize you have it, then you start to take those steps, and before you know it, they're already passed away. By the next day, they shot her to the hospital. When they ran the test, they immediately rushed her into surgery. We didn't get to kiss her goodbye or anything. When she woke up, she had a bag on her. They told her that she had colon cancer in her stomach. So they were able to get rid of everything, but she had it hard. Had her stomach split open. Um, I had to take care of her night and day, you know, um, get up four o'clock in the morning to go clean her bags, her wounds. But she talked about that with the boys, that it, it was so important. For them for to get screened when they get, get older. Right. To get older. We gotta confront the truth. Exactly. And I know within, especially uh, certain parts of the black community and especially with black males, there's a hesitancy to want to know what the doctor's getting ready to tell you. I don't know what it is with males. I think they just don't want to go. I think it's just the reluctancy of just being at the doctor's office. It's almost to them as a waste of time. Because if they still able to get up and go to work in the morning, they feel like they great. So it's this macho attitude that they've shaped, oh, yeah. including myself and others. Oh, yeah. You that for some today. reason, man, I ain't got no time. I'm going to be all right. And plus, I really don't want to know That's right. about any disease that could be popping up in me. That's and right. in this particular case, colon cancer. Yeah, most men will try to walk it off. And I don't want to be letting somebody be that invasive towards my body. Really? But actually, that's <laughs> kind of a, a petty thing. It I mean, is what's very your thought petty. process on it? I think that's a very petty thought. In what sense? It's a procedure that has to be done through all men and all women, gender or whatever. Because if it came down to it and they knew they had colon cancer, oh yeah, check my colon. Oh, that, that's the wake up call then. Oh, yeah, check check me now. now, I don't hey, wanna die. I don't wanna die now. Yeah. But hold on, in the beginning, don't touch my butt.
Well, this is uh, the prep before the day of uh, the colonoscopy. Just stay on a liquid diet. Really, I haven't had anything but a little water, some ginger ale, and, uh, and that's the, the goal here, is to make sure that you do the prep work to allow the, uh, the doctors and staff to see clearly. Health is a serious issue, where at one point in my life, you thought and you knew health was a serious issue, but you just felt like your own Superman, if you will. This is a symbolic pen that was given to me to remind me that I'm fully invested now in colon cancer prevention. The more I think about it, it's, it's getting rougher and easier, so ain't no sugar coating the truth. For all the ones who think that for some reason that you can't do it, watch the 2X man, we're gonna get it done. Whoa, pretty strong, pretty strong. But it's worth it. I gotta chug the rest down within 20 minutes. So I'll take a minute break. <laughs> but I'm not gonna wait, I'm gonna knock this off. And they say, that's that. Whoa. If, especially if I'd been diagnosed a year before the year I was diagnosed, I wouldn't be a grandmother. I wouldn't be here to see four of the most precious little children you've ever seen in your life. I've got people in this church, I can't name them, but that uh, they need a call on, it's time. And he, he's stubborn, he won't do it. He's just very stubborn. And, uh, uh, I think I've talked him into the FIT test, so. A FIT test is a test that you can use to screen for colon cancer. Your doctor would give this test to you. You would take it home, do it in the privacy of your own home. It tells your doctor if there's any blood, so they would know if there's any concern. If there was, you would need to go on further for a colonoscopy. If not, you would go for an annual FIT test and that would cons be considered your screening for colon cancer. Colon cancer is the easiest preventable cancer out there, but you have to be tested. Uh, some people say, well, it's hard to get prepped for a test. Well, if you're gonna take a test in school or whatever, you gotta get prepped for it and get ready for it. I don't think it was that bad. It was drinking, probably drinking the, the fluids and getting the, the preparation, uh, but I don't think it was wasn't too bad for me, you know. If you could just see in hindsight, if we had Larry had it done earlier, we we wouldn't be going through what we're going through now. That's I think one of the hardest things uh, dealing with that is your family, not my wife, uh, my mother, my children, and my grandchildren. Seeing uh, the pain that they went through, uh, they don't always tell you what's you know in their minds and in their hearts. Uh, I know they were wondering at times, were they about to lose me? Uh, and it's, you know, the suffering that you go through is, is one thing, you know, you, you man up and deal with it. But with your family, it's different. The worst part is, forgive me, <laughs> not being able to help them in certain ways, you know. Um, I love them. They know that. Uh, they call me. They'll say, I, you know, can you help me with this? And this, that, and the other. Just There's so many needs that they have, aside from just their diagnosis. Maybe housing, child care. Um, it's hard to leave it at the end of the day. It's real hard. So I would tell anyone that uh, get over any hesitation uh, as it relates to the prep because you can get through that. But the, the bottom line is, is that uh, 
I feel kind of cleansed. It's like uh, probably a needed process for a lot of us. Yes, ma'am. There you go, sis. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Are you welcome? Have a nice day. All right. I say I don't know much about it. I know I'm 45 years old, so in some years I'm going to also have to, you know, partake in this uh, procedure. And uh, this is a good learning experience for me, you know, by being here with my uncle. Oh, I think he, I mean, he's a blessing. Uh, couldn't ask for a better uncle. And people in this community, in this city, this area, couldn't ask for a better leader and a, you know, a better activist, you know, for, for the betterment of the whole area. I honestly believe by him partaking in this that uh, he'll ease the pressure, you know, from other individuals by with his uh, stature in the community and in you know this area in general. And I think that uh, he will enlighten a lot of people that you know there's no reason to be afraid or you know. And I think it's just a wonderful thing by you know him being out front with this. Uh, I've had so many prayers go out from this community for me, and I think that's why that uh, the Lord healed me. I think there was just too many people calling out for me. You couldn't ignore that. Cancer, not only, it's also a financial battle, too, and it's not just support with money, which, thank God, we've had some really good friends who have helped us tremendously. You have to keep on living just because you get the diagnosis. You can't just quit. He has worked every day. He's worked more than what he should have. When uh, it was first discovered uh, how severe my cancer was, I was told by, by the doctor that I would have to go on partial disability. Uh, they said the chemotherapy you're going to be getting is very aggressive. There's no way you can work through it. Uh, I did not want to do that. That's one of the few times I didn't listen to the doctor. I prayed and I asked the Lord. I said, if you will keep me on my feet, I will push myself through, and not only will I not quit anything, I won't even slow down. It's good. It's all, right now at the moment, one of the cancers that were in his lung, his spots are gone, and they are, they've ceased to grow. So we're, I'm claiming it's in remission, and it's going to, it's, it's leaving. So once again, I've been blessed, uh, but I feel like I'm kind of wearing out my guardian angel here. Um, but even though I've been blessed, the Lord's carried me through this, I think I've undergone some unnecessary pain and suffering if it had been detected earlier that I wouldn't have had to go through. A lot of people don't want to go get screened because of fear. And believe me, I am a very religious, uh, religious person. But you can't just say, well, I'll just let God heal me. He gives doctors, thank God for medical technology, the reason they have it, it's God given to them, the study of it. You can't say, well, I'll just let God take care of it. If your car stops, you don't say, well, I'm just going to let God take care of it. You take it to a mechanic. If your house is on fire, you don't just sit there and say, well, God will take care of it. You call the fire department. And it is scary, but if you don't go, then there's no other option that you will be leaving your family a lot sooner. And who's going to take care of your kids? Who's going to be there for your wife? Who's going to be there for your husband? Maybe you're taking care of your parents. And cancer doesn't see age, religion, race, nationality. It's very, very important to get screened. Like I said, if not for you, for the ones you love. Next to being saved, she's the greatest blessing God, God ever gave me. And I, it's one of the things that uh, <clears throat> encourages me to fight to get well. I don't want to leave her. Quite frankly, I enjoy it here. And she's the major reason I do. I know that uh, God calls me home today. I'm in a wonderful place. And I look forward to being there. 
but I'm not in a hurry. I'm good where I'm at. God watch those babies grow. Yeah. Extremely well. Everything was fine. He slept like a baby through all of it. Did a great job with the column prep. Everything was very, very clean and everything was fine. No reason of concern. He's free for 10 years. Okay. It's good to be free for 10 years. Everything worked, came out okay. He did very well. Okay. Yes, everything again was very, very clean. Most important part of the colonoscopy is a good prep. He did it very well. I think he'll be the happiest man on. <laughs> On the earth today, when he, uh, you know, he receives this news and everything came out okay, and uh, yes, great news, great news.